Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkowiak, and today we're going to talk about why I exclusively and only shoot glue-on broadheads. And there is a very important reason for this, uh, and it is flexibility and adjustability. Okay, um, when you buy a screw-in style head, which would be something like what you have right here, but this one is actually a glue-in with an insert in there, but say that was one whole piece, then I could not um, change any aspect of it. If this here was a 225 or 230 grain broadhead as it is, uh, I'm stuck with that. That's all I got. So I the only way I can tune my bow would be to change insert weight or things like that or change the actual shaft uh, to do it. And I have no flexibility. Whereas by shooting a glue-on head, glue-on style broadhead and field tips and judos, I have the flexibility of changing them around and making them work for whatever I need uh, because of adapter options, all right? So this is one reason. There's multiple reasons. We're going to get into that. But first off, as far as flexibility on here, we have different heads. Let's go through the heads here so you know what they are. This is a uh, Ace Supreme uh, or Super Ace, I think they call it. That's that Super Ace broadhead. It's a... Uh, you know, honestly, I don't remember what that is. I want to say that's a 150 grain, one and a half inch wide head right there. It's a great head. Um, I only had six of them. I think this is, I'm down to this one and one more left is all, uh, but fantastic head. The original 125 grain, one and a quarter inch wide Magnus broadhead right there. Absolutely incredible head. Uh, so my daughter's used to kill her bear. Tina's used it to kill deer. Bella and Keegan used it to kill deer. I mean, that head is incredible broadhead. Uh, my beloved... Magnus one and a half inch wide. See one and a quarter there, one and a half inch wide here. Um, that broadhead is is my as it was my go-to head for 20 years. That's just an incredible head, without fail, no doubt about it. One and a half inch wide. Then we and that uh, was 150 grain, one and a half inch wide. So here you got a 175 grain uh, a Boyer whitetail one and a half inch wide, just a smidge, just a hair wider than one and a half, like a sixteenth wider than one and a half. Here you have an A. Boyer uh, Wapiti broadhead, which is one and a quarter inch wide. These two are basically the same right here, okay, except for this is a Wapiti at one and a quarter. This is a bonehead large at uh, one and a half, okay. This is the head here that you see mounted on this as well, too, is the same as this. Um, that would, that's what I shot most of last year after the prototypes from Jason over a tough head after I lost that one. Every animal I killed last year, I killed with this head right here, this setup, and loved it. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, and so that's a 200, so here you're at a, a 175 grain for the one and a quarter version Wapiti, 210 grains for the one and a half inch wide bonehead large. This, I don't know if it's just custom or prototype, but this head is pretty unique, okay? This is pretty incredible. This is one and a half inch wide, just like this, but it's a three to one ratio head, which I don't think anybody's ever made before. That's absolutely amazing. Most three to one ratio heads are like these tough heads, which are great heads. This is the meat head. Mine is notched because it's a practice version, uh, but that's a one and a half inch, or uh, Three to one ratio, so I think it's one inch wide, or one in an eighth, or one in a sixteenth, very narrow head, but that gives you that three to one profile. It's a fantastic head. Um, I just like something wider than that. I'm not really a fan of those myself, personally. Um, I want a little little wider cut, but they are incredible, and they penetrate better than anything in the world. Um, here's a tough head, a 300 grain version. Same kind of head, just a lot thicker, beefier. Um, and I'll kind of, you know, if you were to look at this, Comparing his 300 to the 190. See if I can get you where you're going to focus on here. Let's see here. Look at the difference in width of that. Oh, sorry, I'm doing this from the side, so it's weird. But you can see how wide uh, those blades are on there. How thick and beefy this one is. Um, so anyway, that uh, you know that gives you an example there. But uh, so, but these are both three to ones right here, but they're very narrow. This 3 to 1 is almost a 3 to 1 ratio as well too. Maybe not. Maybe a 2.7 or something like that. But it is a very impressive head. This head right here is very um, impressive. Now I don't shoot any one of these three because honestly they don't fit very well in my quiver. My quiver hood 
Um, if I put them in my quiver, they actually stick out like this far out of the bottom of my quiver here. So I, I don't care for that too much on my Great Northern. Now, Great Northern does make a, uh, I think they call it a long, long hood. Um, and you can get it where that these would fit into, but I don't have enough of them or shoot enough of these to uh, make it worth me buying a whole new quiver for. So I don't really shoot them. But that is a fantastic setup. But so, and this is a 300 grain, one and a half inch wide. 300 grain, one and a 16th, I think, or one and an eighth, and a 190 grain, one and, an, one and an eighth, or one and a 16th. So you can see you got all these variations of broadheads here. And guess what? Other than these, the, other than these two 300ers, okay, this one and this one here, we'll scoot these over. But other than these two heads right here, um, every single head on here, I can shoot and can tune for my bow and make it the way I want with just changing an adapter right here, okay? That's the beauty of that. I don't have to change things. So I can go all the way from a um, 125 grain, one, or 125 grain, one and a quarter inch right here, all the way up to a 210 grain right here, and still, so that's a hundred grain broadhead difference. I can shoot a hundred grains difference of broadhead weight in any combination in between, as you see here, just because of these little guys right here. So what do we got? We got a 32 grain aluminum um, broadhead adapter. We have a 47 grain, or technically like a 50, but it's a 47 grain aluminum broadhead adapter. We have a 75 grain stainless or steel one. We have a 100 grain steel one, and we have a 125 grain steel one. So because of those, that gives me that luxury of shooting any broadhead that I want to. And all of these for practical purposes here. So if I show this again, I got to get where you're in focus here, right here. So with that, I can take any one of these and hot glue that right into the insert, right there, just like that. Any one of these will fit into here and work just like that and glue that right on and become a fully functional broadhead just like I want. Doesn't matter which one I'm using, they all, well this one's actually got glue on it so it's not gonna go in very far. I must have grabbed one it was used before and still has glue. But um, you can see that any one of these will fit right in there and will function on that head. Um, so that gives you a lot of versatility because of these little dudes right here, these, uh, these basically these broadhead adapters give you that flexibility of changing out the weight to anything you want. Like here you're seeing a 210 grain on a 50. Okay, so 210 grain on this insert right here for 50 grains up there, so that makes it two, it's actually 47, so that makes it two, basically it's a 250 grain head. What do we have here? Oh, guess what, a 250 grain head, because we got 150 on a 100 grain adapter. These two heads are the same, even though they're technically 60 grain different weight between this one and this one. Oh, and let's see here, so if I'm looking at those, then let's say I wanna shoot this one, and I take this and I put this on a 75 grain adapter, Again, that one's glued, that's why it's not seating all the way down. But if I put that on there, guess what? 250 grain head with it, you know, they're so close together that that would, this head's the same weight, this head's the same weight, this head's the same weight, you know. Um, and then here we got this one, which is 175 grains. And when I put that one on that same uh, 75 grain one, we get the same weight there. I take this 191, and uh, I put that 190 on a 45 or 47 grain head here, and we get one that's you know 240 grains, very similar in weight. We take a 125 grain head here, and I put it on a. Um, I'm sorry, focus. I got it set pretty tight for there, so you can see this stuff. But so I take that one and at 125, and I put it on a 125, and then guess what? I got 250 grains. So you can see the advantage here that I can shoot this head, this head, this head, this head, this head, and this head, and they're all going to be the same for me. They're all going to be perfectly. All I got to do is screw it on the end of my arrow. It makes no difference whatsoever because I can adjust exactly what weight group I want to go with for those. So without having to change any part of my arrow, I don't have to change inserts out. I don't have to change anything. I don't have to change the shaft spine. I don't got to mess with nothing. All I have to do is set these heads up knowing I want a 250 grain head 
or thereabout, I can set all these heads up and glue them all up the way I want, and I know they're already at that weight. I don't have to take them apart, I don't have to guess, I just set all my heads up at 250 grains. So that's how I get that setup out of there. So it gives me that total flexibility because of using all of these adapters that we have in here to get this weight of head exactly where I want with such a good variety. So for me, that's one of the major advantages to a glue-on head. Now it's also very important for me because of these little dudes right here. This is a judo tip, okay? If you don't shoot judos, well, I mean, you guys that are compound guys probably never do, but us traditional guys, we live by these, okay? These are stump shooting, I can't figure out, there we go. But this is a stump shooting machine right here, this tool um, with those wire arms. They will grab and uh, keep this thing from getting lost. Judos only come in a 135 as a glue-on. Now, if I come over here real quick, hang on, let's see here, give me one sec. Uh, here is your option, I think this is 125 grain screw-in, okay? So there's a screw-in model of 125 grains. What does that do for me when I'm shooting 250 grain heads? If I wanted to shoot a judo, I'm shooting 250 grain heads, this is worthless to me. It means nothing, because it's not gonna fly the way my arrows do. Now I take this 135 grain head, and I put it on a 100 grain adapter, and now I got 235 grains, if I want 235 grains, or I can put it on this one and go up to 260 grains, so I have flexibility to do what I want to make a judo so that a 135 grain judo flies very similar to my broadhead setup, okay? So to me, that's another option because these are very valuable. I don't ever not have one of these in my quiver. Same with field tips, okay? I can take a 125, a 145, a 175, a 300. I got a few different field tips here. But because of these adapters that we're seeing right here, I can build the field tip to match exactly what I needed to do. So they give me very a, a tremendous amount of versatility in my setup, which is vitally important for me um, to be able to change things up, mix it up, whatever I want to do. If I want to run this head for hogs, because I want that you know that big cutting diameter and um, that kind of thing, I can use that setup for hogs. If I'm going now, now I haven't done it, but let's say I was going uh, um, elk hunting, elk hunting or grizzly bear hunting or something like that, and I wanted to run this one and a quarter single bevel right here, I can do that. If I was going, you know, on a, uh, you know, a Asiatic water buffalo hunt, I wanted to run one of these, I can do that. And I don't have to change my arrows. My arrows always stay the same. Okay, nothing changes there. Some of you guys are looking at that arrow and you're going, does that say 500 on it? Does that say 500 spine arrow on there? What is he shooting? Yes, that is a 500 spine arrow right there. Why is it a 500 spine? Because of the fact that my inserts are this long. That is a three inch long insert that I have in there that's 200 grain, three inch insert. Now people question it all the time. Keep in mind, they're like, how can you shoot that out of your 57 pound longbow? I'm only shooting a 27 inch arrow. I draw 26 inches in length, so this is a 27 inch arrow. But let's look at this for a second real quick, side note. So let's put it here where you can see it, okay? The insert, a standard insert, let's say it goes in that far, okay? Mine is going in that far. So that means that even though it's a 27 inch arrow, I only have 24 and a half inches of flexible spine on this arrow because all of that is solid and cannot flex. Therefore, yes, my 500 spine arrows do fly exactly perfect for me with my head set up of about 200, anywhere from 225 to 290 grains, I get perfect flight out of this arrow. Um, keep in mind, that's 450 grains total up front with this insert for a 710 grain arrow. So. The, you know, believe me, it flies absolutely perfect. There's no question about it. I paper tune them and ba I bear shaft tune them when I set them up and I check regularly on paper tuning them and they fly perfect. Um, but this gives me the flexibility and setup on there. Uh, so that's the reason I, I like the gluons. Now, oh, hang on, bumping cameras. Sorry, let me try and put you back to where you were. There we go, I think we're back to good. Um, now the other thing, the other reason that I shoot these and I only shoot glue on heads is in my opinion. Now this is my opinion and it's worth nothing more than a paper it's printed on. But to me, it matters because it's my opinion. But for me, I do not believe there is a stronger head on the market than a 
uh, a glue on style head like this. Okay. Um, I, I now because they're welded together, they're set up right. Um, they're just they're pretty indestructible. I don't trust uh, screws on my broadheads. I don't trust aluminum ferrules on my broadheads. Um, I don't trust a lot of that kind of stuff on there. Or, or, you know, I, I want um, a quality, solid, welded head like this, or even a one piece head like you see, like the cutthroats, for example. Cutthroats are a one piece head. They're fantastic, okay? And now there's starting to be some, like Tough Head has the Evolution series out. It's fantastic. VPA's got a new head out. These are all one piece heads, CNC machined, and they're phenomenal heads. See, that I would I'd be okay with, but I'm not going screwing anyway because all the things we were talking about. But I do not believe or trust any head that has to be held together with screws or made out of aluminum ferrules or uh, things like I'm, I'm just not a fan of that. These have proven themselves for me over, over well over 100 animals. Closer to 200 different animals have been killed with these style heads by me and hundreds more by friends and people that I hunt with um, and I trust this style of a head. So I'm not, there's no possible way I would ever uh, switch and go to something else. I'm just not a fan of that setup. So for me, this is the beauty of this is it is such a versatile system and I love the power of these heads. Uh, I've been shooting the single bevels a lot now. I probably won't go back to shooting these other heads. Now I will probably still use Use these on pigs a few times uh, or have some in my quiver too especially when I get into um, some of the nasty places and I'm you know if I'm, I'm in you know mid mid calf deep water in there and I know that when I shoot if I pass through a pig I'll never find that arrow again if I have the option I always have these in my quiver I keep one of the this arrow in my quiver this one here and this one here are right next to each other. This is in spot number one, this is in spot number two. Okay, then the rest of them, then I have another one in spot number three of these, and then four and five are these. So that's kind of how I set it up when I'm pig hunting, but that way this is spot one and spot two, so that if I have to, when I'm walking, if I see pigs, depending on the terrain I'm in, if I know I can recover my arrow, I grab this one. If I don't think I can recover my arrow, because again, remember, we're hunting pigs. I'm in water constantly. Um, if I'm not going to be able to recover my arrow, then I'm going to this one. Because to, now, these magnets, even though they're not made anymore and they're amazing, I still have a whole bunch of them. And I already have them. They're free. And uh, uh, like I said, I'm leaning more towards using the single bevels for deer and stuff like that more often anyway. So I'm not afraid to lose these now like I once was. So for me, those are, are the ones that I'm going to go with when it comes to shooting at a pig in that kind of conditions. Uh, these as well too, I may actually even use these. I'm working on a way to quiet them down a little bit. For me, that whitetail head, vented heads for me are very noisy because of that tremendous amount of helical that I have on my feathers. Uh, let me see here, you can see that. But that tremendous, look at how, I mean, look at from where the front of that arrow, or that feather is on that arrow. Let me get you where you're, right there. Where that feather mounts on the front, and then as I roll that, look how far we go to get to where the back of that mounts. Okay, I mean, you're talking quarter of the way around a shaft on a standard 246 gold tip. So my helical is tremendous. These arrows are just whipping through there. When they're spinning, um, I mean, these things are just spinning unbelievably fast. <laughs> and uh, so it makes a lot of noise. It, or it doesn't make a lot of noise, but when you take a vented head and spin it that fast, it's going to whistle. Um, so, but that's my fault, not the fault of the head. The head is incredible. Same with this one. This one whistles as well too. Um, vented heads are an issue for me because of my helical that I run on my feathers, not because of the head design. If I were to lighten that helical up, make them a little less aggressive, then these probably would not make noise for me. But the way I set it up, they do. Um, so those, this, this head here, and this head here um, will be used for pigs. Pigs are, uh, they still move, but um, you know, the, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I may not even bring them for pigs, but I'm going to work on a way to see if I can quiet them down a little bit um, and see if I can make them where I'm thinking they're worthy to, not, to hunt with or not. If not, they're just going to go away. Um, but uh, anyway, this is, this is why I choose glue on heads every single time. Oh, other thing I want to talk about. There's a lot of people out there, okay? Oh my God. An aluminum, aluminum broadhead adapter, they're so weak, they're so flimsy, that's never going to hold up. I'll never shoot those. Only got to shoot the steel ones. Steel's all that matters. Forget the aluminum ones, they're no good. Okay, you hear that stuff all the time. Um, for the record, I have killed probably 50 animals with aluminum heads and never once had a problem. And actually on my social media, um, I did some testing 
uh, about six months ago actually, five, six months ago, I did testing on these and I took an insert, screwed it into the end of the arrow like this, into a raw piece, actually I still got another piece here, I'll show you for real. Do I have it here? Uh, I did, yes I do. So I took a piece of leftover arrow that I had right here, leftover shaft, and I put an insert in it, stuck the insert in there, and then I took the adapter, and I put the adapter in there. So I had this type of a setup, okay, but the insert was glued in, but I took this type of a setup that you're seeing right here, and then I put it, I clamped this in my vise, so that was locked in the vise, God, this is so weird being sideways. There we go. But I would clamp this in my vise, and then I put a tube over here, and I applied pressure till I could snap that. Guess what? What do you think broke first? Do you think it was the steel one or the aluminum one that broke first in that testing? And I, I, had, I put it on my social media. Yeah, I didn't do video, but I did a lot of pictures of my results. I didn't know what was going to happen. I should have recorded it, um, but I did not. But what do you think broke first, aluminum or steel? What if I told you it was neither one? In all instances, the inserts right here broke first. Was the inserts that broke. They broke before any of these adapters did. Now keep in mind, arrows are designed to go straight. They go one direction straight. And so when they hit, they're going in straight and hitting like this. They come in and they hit straight and that's what's gonna happen. So they're not meant to be laterally forced like this and bent sideways and try to snap them. But that's the only way we can really have to test them to see if they're strong. What's the shear strength? Both inserts gave out before the, uh, the adapters did, even the aluminum ones. So uh, the weak link in your arrow setup is not your adapters, it is your inserts. Okay, these will snap right off of here. They will basically bend and pop and come right, this whole thing bends and comes apart. Right with the, this whole thing in here, that's mounted in here like that. Hang on, sorry, let me find you. This that's mounted in here is this will, right from right here, will bend and split the arrow apart. This whole thing will bend as one whole unit there and come apart. And that's what happens. And uh, it's pretty impressive to see. Like I said, I did put it on Instagram and on Facebook to show the, the results, but point being, and what I want to make a point of is there is nothing wrong with using aluminum adapters, okay? I promise you that's not going to be a problem. I have never had one of these things break on an animal, and I've, I've shot a lot of animals with them, but steel never had a problem, and aluminum never had a problem. Now, as far as the actual strength when I did break them, out of curiosity for you guys, uh, also what I put on social media, the difference between aluminum and steel snapping side strength with that test that I showed you where I put them in there and I wrenched it and snapped them, that test, so minor in difference. I would say maybe 10% stronger for the steel, but nothing like you would think. Not even a little, it was incredible the, 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 how, how close they really were. It was shocking. Um, so yeah, so in reality, just something to keep in mind. If uh, you need to run aluminum weights, like in my uh, like in my 210 grains right here, I need to run aluminum to get me that 250. So I run that 50 grain, gives me a 260 grain head. I have no doubt qualms or problems running that aluminum adapter in there. This one here, I need to run 100 grain. I have no problems with the steel 100 grain. None of it matters. Uh, the stainless steel inserts you get from uh, this. This is my homemade. This is my very own homemade. Um, double insert, 200 grain double insert that I make. Okay, I've done videos, I've talked about it, I've shown it. Um, I basically take two of these, put them back to back, and I grind the head off of one. There's a nail in there that's actually, I put them on two punches, set it on a punch, set it on another punch, and bang, hit it with a hammer, and I lock them together, and then, um, so anyway, so I make those. I've been shooting these now for about eight years now. Um, uh, uh, Ethics Archery came out with a, it's just not going to stay there. Ethics Archery came out with a 200 grain adapter or insert like this, and uh, you can cut this at different lines for 150, 175, or, or 125, 150, 175, or 200 total length. This insert is way much stronger than this insert is, than a brass. The steel is way stronger than the brass is by far, no doubt about it, no question. If you can swing it and afford it, those are the, definitely the way to go. Um, I have so many of these and so many arrows set up that way, I'm gonna stay with them. And if you notice, they are different in length from where they mount on a shaft here. Okay, if you look at that shoulder length, I am about a quarter inch longer on mine 
And so I'm assuming that's gonna maybe mess up my arrow flight a little bit and I'm a perfectionist for my arrows to be perfectly tuned. So I do not know if I wanna mess with that. Maybe it wouldn't matter. <clears throat> I'm not sure, I haven't played with it enough yet. So I'm not sure there, but I also, I do like personally, I like the lip size on the brass ones. Now this is gonna seem weird, but remember I told you arrows go forward, okay? They're going forward into the into the target. So now it's gonna be hard to show, but if you look at, let me see if I can get focus on here how to do this. Again, this is really weird being on the side. All right, so I'm gonna hold them on the end. Look at the height of the shoulder on those. Okay, see how the brass one has got a much taller shoulder that's gonna meet up against the front of the, here, let me show it to you this way, okay? So if I take my head, or my insert here, and I'm gonna, it's gonna stick on there because this is jammed. Hang on, Ugh. I may, uh, let, me, let me grab a regular one. Hang on one second here, let me set that down. Let me grab a regular insert for you, a single one. Okay, because when I put my, my double ones in, they, they, like I said, that takes up a lot of space. But so I'll give you an example. Look at on here, again, sorry about, I'm trying to keep it close up, but okay, this edge right here, see how much lip, it's even got a taper, but see how, how that has a good solid edge. Look at how deep that lip is that meets against that carbon, okay? I like that because it fits real well right there and it holds solid. Uh, the ethics ones are great, but they are more uniform in line and almost a little smaller. You can almost see that gap of the carbon being almost a hair bigger than that. And not that that's a big deal, I don't think, but I, I, I just noticed that. So um, does it matter to me? Not a whole lot. This would be easier to put a collar over. Okay, collar, for example, I think I have one right here to show you. Do I, in here I do. So a collar, for example, here, uh, hang on, losing stuff. Okay, so if we take this, this is a direct bond one, I think, yeah, okay, so anyway, all right, so a collar would be if you take this right here, this insert, and you have that on there, you could take a collar like this one right here, slide it over, and put it right there and then mount that, glue that on right there so that that way it just adds strength at this juncture, this juncture on here right here. It's a great idea. Um, and you can slide, what's nice about the ethics is they are the same outside diameter, and you can slide and insert very easily, or an outsert very easily over that. Now with the other one, with this one here, it's a little tighter. See, I can't. I could almost force that on there. Um, I could force it, but it's it's just a little too tight to get over there. But it's loose on the carbon shaft. So, point being that it will not go over the insert. Does that matter? I don't know. Dang it! Sorry. This is so weird being next to a camera. I'm not used to this. But uh, as you can see here, so I mean, you would run that one right up, butted up to it like this. Does that matter if it's butted up that way? No, I think you're getting the same strength as long as you're covering that carbon. But the ethics one does let you go all the way over top of both of them and then mount that right up there so you can hold that whole thing together. So, you know, just something to con consider and keep in mind. But me personally, when I run out of these brass ones and no longer have those and I want to change setup, I will personally be going to these Ethics 200 grain inserts. I think they're they're phenomenal. But like I said, now I am currently tuned for these ones and I have hundreds of them. So it'll be a while before I do them in no hurry. But when I need more inserts and I'm going to do something new arrow-wise, the Ethics inserts are the ones I'll be going to. So there you go. That explains why I use um, you know, that's why glue-on broadheads are all that matter to me. Nothing else out there ever, I don't even look at them. I'm not even remotely interested in any kind of a screw-in broadhead. Um, I did shoot the one from Toughhead, that prototype. It was a prototype, um, and uh, it, was a, it was basically identical to this head right here. Um, but it was a prototype with uh, titanium ferrule and different uh, S7 tool steel, I think, and um, all titanium. It was, you know, just it was a great setup, and it was actually still an adapter. There was still an adapter like this in it, and then it had a hole drilled through and it was held in with a roll pin. Um, it was kind of a prototype head, it was a great head. But this is my setup, um, and why, like I said, I, I this is this is it. I got nothing else really to say on it, but uh, but I love the, the glue-on heads. I won't uh, ever shoot anything other than glue-on because of all the versatility, and I love the strength of these style broadheads. They just, they do it for me. So there you go, thanks for watching. All right, talk to you later, bye.